good afternoon everyone uh, my name is nilesh bajaj i am co-founder of wave mobility so just some few observations before i start my presentation number one yes this session is the toughest one <laughs> because uh, normally if i'm in office i would not be sitting in one place at this time after lunch i would just move around talk to people and make sure energy level remains high at this time uh, second just the amount of information that has that we have seen and heard in in this panel is just tremendous uh, from technical business analytics uh, i mean this is actually a refresher for somebody who wants to know the complete landscape of ev transition today in india uh, so uh, in my presentation you will find some things that are a little repetitive so sorry for that in advance um, and finally thank you the, thank you organizers uh, and dr garg for having me here so uh, without any further delay um uh, let me start my presentation so i will before getting into global ev transition i'll just take a a minute to talk about climate change uh because i think that's the the larger reason why we are talking about this transition and we are all making an effort to move to uh, renewable sources on the grid and also the way we consume this energy so we all know we have undeniably uh, increased the temperature of the earth by burning fossil fuels over the last 100 years um and uh, fossil fuels were actually even i mean even that has come from solar it has just converted and been in the earth for millions of years the only problem is that the cycle time is very large it was it's hundreds and thousands of years so we don't have that much time so we need a faster cycle and second is the release of greenhouse gases uh, which we cannot afford any more given that we are already at a brink of the 1.5 degree uh climate change so uh, we are seeing events like flash floods forest fires um ice polar ice caps melting and everything happening very very frequently and increasing in intensity over the past few years so uh our the the larger problem is three part as i understand one is to capture second is to store and third is to use so where we come in is we as an automaker are the users of this concentrated energy and we want to use do that in the most efficient and cleanest way possible so already you can see sorry there is a i'll just use this yeah so already the a lot of oems have committed to convert to a 100% electric vehicle uh, production Uh, in the next decade or a little bit more than that because we all understand that we are a significant contributor uh, to this consumption part so one question we we are frequently asked and i would uh, like some data from you uh, mr lewis that uh, you said that we consume we have 3 kilograms of carbon dioxide uh, released when we when we receive a package but how much is it when it comes through a electric wheel Uh, electric vehicle that is charged on a fossil phase uh, fossil fuel based grid so what that number is about is it 50% or less than that or more than that it is around 60% 60% needs to be there exactly so we are talking about well to wheel efficiency so even if we have a largely coal based grid using an electric vehicle already is giving us 40% to 50% benefit just by moving to electric vehicle power train it's just that more that much more efficient and given with our efforts to move to a renewable uh, renewable generation uh, especially our targets of 450 gigawatt by 2030 uh, this is a process and any transition it will take time but this is the right step in the right direction so for the first part which is the adoption of electric vehicles in india we are doing great three wheelers are leading the race followed by two wheelers uh government policies have been extremely supportive for these categories uh but as we come to the larger vehicle segment be it passenger cars or larger vehicles there are still some challenges both technically and financially and policy level uh, that we need to overcome to cross the chasm so some of the parameters that we have understood are required for first the initial adoption of a new technology Uh, and then later the mass adoption uh, are listed here in this slide so i'll just go through the one that enables the early adoption for electric vehicles uh, which is comparable performance parity on tco 
reasonable charging time and sufficient choice of models. So I believe we already have this part completed when you talk about the EV adoption curve in India. But from going from here to mass adoption, we need further validation of reliability of products. So till now, electric vehicles are new. We don't know how long they are sustaining, what is the serviceability, how good is the infrastructure. Uh, we need service network uh, uh, accessibility. We need ample charging infrastructure in the years to come. And we need reduction in vehicle prices, which kind of uh, loosely or even directly links with the battery uh, pack prices. So when these no four factors will come together, we will see a significant mass adoption for the electric vehicles in the country. And our estimate is this should happen somewhere in the 2026, 27 uh, year. So uh, I will talk about things that are uh, that are new and that are happening in the space of electric mobility uh, because we are making a transition from ice to electric. So it is not that everything that was happening in the ice age or, or sorry the, the internal combustion age uh, is kind of carried over as it is uh, in the electric mobility space. We are actually seeing things and vehicles and form factors and systems which were not possible to be created before, uh, but are now possible as we are making this transition to the electrification phase. So starting with, with the most futuristic is the EV tall, uh, vertical takeoff and landing, uh, very uh, futuristic. We have, we have seen it in all the sci-fi movies. Uh, uh, there are very uh, reasonable uh, estimates that by year 2050, this will become one of the major transport or urban transport mechanisms uh, because we will be using the Z parameter or the height of the cities and it will help decongest the cities. Coming a little bit closer to autonomous vehicle, uh, that is a reality now. So if you look at Tesla already delivered more than three million vehicles, will probably deliver fifth, five fifth millionth vehicle this year uh, and uh, most of them are fully capable of level five autonomous driving. So autonomous vehicle is a reality. Drivers may become, you know, optional. You don't, you, you, if you want to drive, you can drive. It's just like moving to an automatic car. So things that we thought will come in future are already here. Fast charging is a thing which is helping us make a shift from uh, internal combustion engine to electric mobility because it helps us with the range anxiety, uh, you don't have to wait a long time if you're going long distances. Because right now, mainly the adoption of electric vehicles is limited to limited range operations, such as limited campus operations or city operations. So uh, fast charging is very, very critical if we want to see a large acceptability of electric vehicles. And fourth, and the point in which I'm going to deep dive in my presentation, is mini mobility. So mini mobility is a new category uh, which in a way has been around since decades, but as the transition to EV powertrain is happening, it has kind of rejuvenated this category. So McKinsey describes mini mobility as a three or a four wheeled vehicle for one or two people, which is lightweight and has speed suitable for urban transport. So this is a category of vehicle, which we believe is going to be revolutionary as we make a transition from internal combustion engine to the electric age. So mini mobility has several advantages over both the two wheelers and the four wheeler categories between which it sits. So number one uh, advantage is that these are far more efficient because of lower mass, lower cost, lower bill of material. Second, they are easy to drive and park. They are very small. So in our extremely congested cities uh, where we don't have space, uh, they, they are saving on infrastructure and they are making life a little bit easier. As compared to two wheelers, they're far more safer and comfortable. So although two wheelers are convenient, but that convenience comes at a cost that you're not safe from weather, from pollution, uh, or you're not comfortable in a hot or a rainy day or a, even a winter uh, like in Delhi. So mini mobility gives you comfort of a car, but convenience closer to a smaller vehicle. And with this small size, the impact on the environment to manufacture these vehicles is also significantly lower. 
just consider, I mean, if you're buying an electric car that is a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack, versus if you're buying a small car for your everyday use that is a 15 kilowatt hour battery pack, but the ranges are comparable, the real world usage range is comparable, which one would you want uh, from a sustainability point of view? Next, it, it is affordable charging, uh, not just from cost point, but also from time, because a smaller pack means it can be charged faster. And again, when I'm saying smaller, it does not mean that you have to only slow charge it. Uh, there are vehicles which are small, and yet they support the CCS2 or fast charging standards. And finally, all these parameters make mini mobility the perfect vehicle for city use. So there are already sufficient examples across the globe of mini mobility. Uh, but the one stellar example which I would, I would really like to refer is the Wuling Mini EV in China. Uh, that vehicle has been selling for more than three, four years in China. Only in year 2022, they sold more than five lakh quantities of this single model alone. There are, there are a number of other smaller vehicles also in Chinese market. Uh, we see a variant of this as MG Comet launched in India recently. Uh, we have vehicles like Micro Lino and Citroen Amy uh, that prove the uh, the demand for similar category of vehicles in European market also. Now, uh, research agencies have recently started addressing this as a completely separate category in their market reports. So this is one of the excerpts from a McKinsey report that shows that in India-like markets, there is more than 50% acceptability of having a small mini mobility class vehicle in the mix of a household vehicles. So they're not assuming that you will have only one two-seater vehicle, but you will have a household which may have one family car, which you use for weekend trips or longer journeys. But for your everyday commute, people are looking for a small and more practical solution. Now I will focus on India's challenges today. Uh, we are, as we, we are talking about the things that we are doing great, but it is also important to look at the things that we are not doing great or, or some of the negatives that we really need to rectify soon. So uh, just to start with, we have nine out of two, our top 20 polluted cities in the world. Uh, and our transport sector contributes almost 10% of the greenhouse gas emissions. That's a complete road transport sector, not just cars. Uh, we have uh, all time high oil import uh, bill right now around $160 billion. And the poor hair, health, uh, air quality is contributing directly to negative GDP. So these are some of the negatives that we really need to take in. Uh, just adding to this list, we also rank very high in the traffic index, where our average speed is barely 20 kilometers per hour in the, uh, in the peak hour traffic. So what has led to these kind of uh, I mean, if you talk about a city, uh, it's not really a good quality of life. So here, are, here is a little bit statistics on what type of cars were selling eight years ago versus what are selling today. And the biggest difference, and you, you would know even without me telling you, is that SUV contribution has gone up from 16% to almost 42%. So people have started buying SUVs and started using them as their primary vehicle in the cities. So we have the same infrastructure, we have more vehicles, and we have larger vehicles. So we are fundamentally very, very, uh, you know, we are, we, are op we are operating in a very unoptimized way. So we are not saying people should not buy SUVs. I mean, uh, SUVs have their purpose. They are great for long distance travel. Uh, they are very, very comfortable. They are good for when you're traveling as a family, five seats, seven seats, and so on. But while doing that, if you are also using these six days a week when you are traveling alone, and here is a, rep uh, a report by Nielsen, which was on a study done specifically on Indian market, it shows that on five, five days of a week, 71% of Indian travel alone in their vehicle with just a laptop bag. <clears throat> and average distance traveled is less than 35 kilometers. So do you really need a five-seater, 500-kilometer range SUV to go to office every day? And most of the respondents in this survey also agreed that yes, having a smaller car will improve their quality of life. It will also save their time and hassle of driving and parking in the city. 
So now here's the part of what we are doing uh, to solving this problem, is that we have made mobility are creating purpose-built electric vehicles for urban mobility. And the first vehicle is EVA that we have unveiled at the New Delhi Auto Expo in January of 2023. Uh, some of you might have seen it on social media as India's first solar car because we have an option of a solar roof. The vehicle is a two-seater born electric air-conditioned car that goes 250 kilometers on a single charge. It has efficiency of 20 kilometer per kilowatt hour, which is highest in the class. Uh, and its narrow body helps you to navigate easily in the traffic and park it. So having a small car also help us achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So we have low, uh, low emissions, basically direct or indirect. Uh, we have cleaner cities, cleaner air, lesser noise pollution. And because of the high efficiency of the smaller vehicles, the vehicle fosters responsibility of consumption of resources. So when we are saying we just moving to EVs is not sufficient, also it is important to uh, look at what we are consuming in the process. So thank you. That's it from my side. Uh, mini mobility is, is part of our vision for the sustainable and renewable future.